Right now at 6, anxious neighbors forced to shelter in place after a deadly shooting turns into an hours-long manhunt. It just makes me feel like it's not safe to walk around, which is not okay. Plus, mystery in a southwest Washington forest where human remains have been found for the third time. You do get tied to these cases, especially trying to put yourself in a family's position. And why a local business that helped satisfy Portland's sweet tooth now appears to be leaving a bitter aftertaste. I'm just angry because it feels like we've all been duped. Good evening, everyone. Let's get right to breaking news in southeast Portland, where neighborhoods remain on lockdown amidst an active and ongoing search for a suspect, police say, who shot a woman who has now died in the hospital. Let's get right to Blair Best Live in the Palhurst Gilbert neighborhood. Blair, this has been underway for some nine hours now, so I have to ask you again, any sign of that shooter? It's still no sign, David. We're told police are still searching. We recently learned that heartbreaking update that the woman who was shot died in the hospital. Her family was here earlier today. We talked with them off camera. They tell us she was ambushed before she was shot. If you take a look behind me, the roads are still blocked off. Police are still on scene as the search for the suspect continues. Just after 8.30 Tuesday morning, a woman was shot in this residential neighborhood off Southeast 136th Avenue and Ramona Street. She was taken to the hospital with critical life-threatening injuries and later died. I have met the victim uh, walking our children to and from school, but just even knowing that it was someone that lived close to me was heart disheartening. And then when I heard who it was, it just really makes me sad. Police searched for the suspect who they believe to be armed and dangerous for more than six hours. It's very alarming, um, but we're taking every precaution we can at this point to lock down the area where we believe this individual might be. A SWAT team along with dozens of officers set up a perimeter, which included Gilbert Park Elementary and Sonata's daycare and preschool. It's right there with my two children. Um, the incident happened as the kids were going to school this morning. Students and staff were not allowed to leave as police cleared the area and searched by air and ground. We're getting a, you know, a good bird's eye view of this area because again, this is a potentially, I mean, not potential, it's a dangerous situation. Oh, that's scary. Um, I hope that they're going to find a bad guy very soon. This woman lives a few streets away from where the shooting happened. We walk around. It just makes me feel like it's not safe to walk around, which is not okay to me. Um, if you're at home, you see anything suspicious, um, anything out of place in your yard, if you have an outhouse, uh, outbuilding, anything like that, and you see anything suspicious, call 911 immediately. About two hours ago, Portland police ended that search throughout the neighborhood. They're now focused on a single home where they believe the suspect could be. That shelter in place is still in effect for the immediate area. We're told that will be lifted once the search ends, which could be in a few hours, they say. David. Yeah, Blair Best with some potential progress on the search efforts there. Thank you, Blair. In your headlines now, Portland firefighters have rescued a woman and a dog from a burning home in the Montevilla neighborhood. The fire started just before 11 near Southeast 84th and Alder. Fire officials say blackberry bushes caught fire first, then flames spread to the home. Rescuers say a woman inside took her dog and hid in a basement bathroom. You see them coming out of the house there. A family member and police officer tried to get them out, but it took the efforts of fire crews to bring them to safety. We connected to the hydrant over here. We got water to the fire. We made the rescue. We ventilated the structure, and now we just need to figure out how this started. And the woman and that family member were taken to the hospital as a precaution. The dog will be OK. In Vancouver, police are searching for a missing teenager they describe as endangered. Authorities say 16 year old Tristan Huang was last seen in the early morning hours on Saturday, walking near 112th Court near State Route 14 and I-205. Huang is about six foot, 150 pounds with black hair, brown eyes and wears glasses. Anyone who sees him should contact Vancouver police. A nearly $2 billion merger between Alaska and Hawaiian Airlines is now moving forward. As part of this approval by the U.S. Department of Transportation, the airlines will have to maintain several key routes between Hawaii and the U.S. mainland. Alaska and Hawaii must also ensure that miles earned in their respective programs are preserved after they are combined. The airlines say they expect to close the merger in the coming days.
Oregon is now getting a $43 million boost from the federal government to help cover the cost of road repairs due to natural disasters. It will reimburse the state for what it's spent over the last five years fixing roads damaged by flooding, winter storms and landslides. The U.S. Forest Service is also getting a portion of the money for repairs made to forest roads and culverts. And Washington is getting about five and a half million to cover the cost of repairs following storms there in 2020 and 2021. And a traffic alert in East Multnomah County where the Stark Street Bridge over the Sandy River in Troutdale is now closed until further notice. County officials say one of the bridge's stone support walls partially collapsed. Drivers who need to cross the Sandy River to get to, onto Stark Street will now have to use the Sandy River Bridge. That's closer to I-84. Matt? Okay, David, thanks very much. It is a cloudy one out there, and yeah, it's been raining at the coast. That's Cannon Beach. Just a soggy affair up and down the Oregon coast and the valleys not raining, but it's cloudy and it's going to rain as we go into the evening hours. We're still in the 60s. It won't get very cold tonight with the cloud cover, but it is going to get a little bit wet. The rain will not be heavy. If we get more than a couple of hundreds, I'll be surprised by that. And the timing is rather unfortunate because there is a full moon tonight. It is the much heralded and very popular harvest moon. It's also a super moon because this year the harvest moon coincides with the moon's closest approach to Earth in the moon's orbit around the Earth. So that looks, that's what makes it a super moon. Uh, the moon rises about the same time for several nights in a row. That's what makes the harvest moon special, different from other full moons. And of course, historically, the moonlight helped folks in olden times, days of yore bring in the harvest. So again, that's why it's called the harvest moon. The other thing that's happening with the moon tonight is there's a lunar eclipse and it peaks in Portland about 747 or so, but it's going to be cloudy. It is only about three and a half percent of the moon will, uh, will see the darkest shadow of the earth. It doesn't matter. We won't see it all because the moon will be eclipsed by clouds. So showers tonight, but it clears out tomorrow. We got some really good weather on the way for the end of summer. David. Yeah, I love the harvest moon. If only, as you said, we could see it. Thank you, Matt. The decision over whether to block supermarket giants Kroger and Albertsons from merging is now in the hands of a federal judge. Closing arguments wrapped up today in Portland as the Federal Trade Commission argued the merger would result in higher prices for consumers. With Kroger's CEO testifying, it would actually mean the opposite. We expect a judge to make a decision on whether to temporarily block the merger as other cases, including one in Washington, play out. All right, election day just 48, 49 days out, which means it will not be long before those voter pamphlets and then the ballots start showing up in your mailbox. And it turns out today is actually National Voter Registration Day. Ashley Graham shows us what we need to know. It's important to make sure your voter registration is up to date so you're ready before Election Day rolls around. You can check your registration online through the Oregon Secretary of State's website. Now, if you go on that website and you find you need to make a change or maybe you need to register to vote for the first time in Oregon, you can do that online. You can do that in person at the county election office and you can also do that by mail. So why might you need to update your registration? Well, there are a few reasons. Maybe you changed your name. Maybe you moved and you changed your address. You want to ensure that you still get that ballot or if you've decided to change your party affiliation or you want to be affiliated with a certain party, you can also make that change. So it's not long until those voter pamphlets arrive in the mail. The deadline to register for the election is on October 15th. Then ballots go out the next day and you have until November 5th to cast that ballot. But what if you're voting in Washington? Well, election day is still November 5th and ballots still go out in October. But the difference is Washington doesn't have a set deadline for voter registration like Oregon does. Washington voters can register to vote or update their addresses in person right up until Election Day.